8 uh, on respiratory system. So I hope that you already have uh, your lecture note with you. Okay, so in this chapter, these are the learning outcomes. Okay, um, where in this chapter, we are going to look at um, the different type of respiratory surface in animals. Okay, in animals. So that is the first uh, learning outcome. Explain in brief the various respiratory surfaces in animals. Okay, so examples of a respiratory surface can be uh, the lungs, the skins, okay, the plasma membrane of unicellular organisms, uh, the uh, the tracheal system uh, in insects, okay. So those are respiratory surfaces, okay. And then number two, identify and describe the structure and function of human respiratory sy uh, system, okay. So basically, the human respiratory system, we depend on our lungs, okay, uh, for for gaseous exchange and also uh, in uh, in order to distribute uh, the, the the oxygen and to remove uh, the carbon dioxide from from your body is through the circulatory system okay and then number three state the fixed law of diffusion okay this one here so this one we are going to look at the factors that increases the rate of the rate of uh, diffusion for gaseous uh, for respiratory gas, okay, the rate of diffusion for respiratory gases. Okay, respiratory gases are carbon dioxide and also oxygen, okay. So, we are going to look at what are the factors that will um, influence or affects rate of diffusion, such as, for example, um, um, distance, okay, uh, the, the distance. So, uh, in order to increase a rate of diffusion, a distance between um, respiratory surface and also the respiratory medium to extract respiratory gas must be short. It gets short distance that, that allows uh, gases to diffuse okay, through uh, across the respiratory surface. So that is one of the, uh, the factors. Distance, okay, short, the distance must be short. Okay, so there are a, a couple more. Uh, factors that affects rate of diffusion that we are going to look at in this part fixed law of diffusion and then uh, the next one is Dalton's uh, law of partial pressure so this one we are going to look at uh, the the partial pressure of oxygen and carbon dioxide that uh, that uh, that influence also the rate of diffusion okay huh? and then number four uh, explain the process of gas exchange and also gas uh, transport okay process of gas exchange for oxygen and also for carbon dioxide throughout your body okay using circulatory system and then uh, number five describe the oxygen dissociation curve of hemoglobin as you know uh, hemoglobins are pigments okay pigments within your red blood cells or your uh, or uh, the erythrocyte so one red blood cells will contain many hemoglobin that function to bind to oxygen molecule so one hemoglobin will bind to four oxygen molecule so for this one we are going to look at a graph okay a graph that shows um in which uh, in different parts of your body that uh, that that has different partial pressure of oxygen and and causes the release of uh, uh, oxygen from the hemoglobin okay so this one uh, it, uh, uh, is on the oxygen dissociation curve okay of hemoglobin and then uh, the last uh, the next one discuss the control of breathing uh, by chemoreceptors and then the last one is the uh, discuss the effects of smoking so these these are the uh, learning outcomes that we are going to look at in this chapter okay okay so uh, the first one so okay so this is the first subtopic uh, of this chapter we are going to look at the various the different the different uh, types of rest, uh, respiratory surface in different animals okay so different animals have different respiratory surface okay so some animals uses uh, the, the lungs okay some uh, animals uses gills some animals uses uh, their skin for uh, for exchange of gases okay 
So gas exchange is a parent in structure of respiratory surfaces where gas exchange uh, gas exchange occurs by diffusion. Okay, so obviously oxygen diff, uh, from the uh, respiratory medium respir respiratory medium can be the air or water. Okay, so the air or the water will contain uh, the uh, the respiratory gas, oxygen, and also carbon dioxide. So in order for for uh, for oxygen to enter into your body, the process is through the process of diffusion. Okay, gas exchange occurs by diffusion across across the respiratory surface. Okay, so cells that carry out uh, gas exchange have plasma membrane that must be in contact with an aqueous solution. Okay, so in order for for oxygen or for carbon dioxide to move across the respiratory surface the respiratory surface must be moist okay uh, must be moist uh, so this allows um, easy uh, diffusion of of oxygen or carbon dioxide across the respiratory surface so, so that's why it says here must be co uh, in contact with an aqua solution this is to allow this uh, respiratory gas to dissolve and then diffuse okay and then um okay so for fast gas exchange okay respiratory surface for exchange of gases between their cells their cells is referring to the cells uh that made up the the respiratory surface which are, for example we have lungs inside our lungs we have many alveoli so the alveoli is composed of cells that are one cell thick okay so uh, so those are respiratory surface so respiratory respiratory surfaces for gas exchange of gases sorry for exchange of gases between their cells and the respiratory medium must be large and moist kan dalam dalam lung kita kita ada banyak alveolus alveolus tu pun bentuk uh, macam apa cluster macam tu and then it is it is uh, surrounded by many blood capillaries so so this contribute to the large surface area and then it must be moist okay the surface the the characteristics of respiratory surface it must be large it must be moist it must be thin okay alveolus it is one cell thick the uh, the blood capillaries surrounding the alveolus is also one cell thick okay so it must be thin so this uh, this reduces the distance okay the distance uh, for the gas to diffuse across the respiratory surface okay so and then the uh, the path for diffusion must be short so sebab respiratory surface to thin so dif uh, the the distance will be short and this increases okay increases the rate of diffusion okay so distance distance must be short short disebabkan oleh apa respiratory surface tu tadi thin okay one cell thick for example okay okay so uh, the, the different types of respiratory surface we have the outer surface okay okay the outer surface for example um unicellular organisms such as amoeba or paramecium they don't have any lungs they don't have any skin okay so uh they they are unicellular organisms so the the uh the diffusion of gas okay oxygen into the cell or carbon dioxide uh, diffuses out is through the plasma membrane of the cell okay of the surface and then the skin so example of organism that um that exchange gas through the skins for example you have the frogs okay uh, uh, frogs um Frogs also uh, exchange gas through lungs. So, maksudnya kalau frogs, uh, they depend on the skin and the, uh, and also the lungs. So, so yang hari, hari tu kita tengok circulatory system for frogs, they are palmocutaneous kan. Skin and also lungs. And then for gills, uh, fish, starfish, okay, any aquatic uh, uh, animals. Okay, and then the trichia. Okay, trichia, these are for insects. Okay, uh, insects. Um, uh, macam ni lah, okay, macam cricket ni, alright, ah, uh, or grasshopper, alright. So these are the different types of respiratory surface where 
gas diffuse across these respiratory surfaces. Okay, carbon dioxide diffuses out, oxygen diffuses in. Okay, so this uh, diagram it gives you the different types of respiratory surface. As I said, uh, unicellular organisms such as amoeba or paramecium, unicellular single cell organism. So they depend on the plasma membrane. Okay, of the cell. And then uh, oxygen diffuses in, carbon dioxide diffuses out. Okay, and then amphibians. Okay, amphibians, uh, gas exchange. Gas exchange can be through the skin. Can okay? so this is the skin of the frog or through um, uh, the lungs. Can okay? so the blue do skin and also lungs. Okay, and then when beneath the skin, uh, it has um, many blood capillaries. Okay, that 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 uh, that will um involve in the transportation of the of the gas throughout the body and then uh, echinoderms such as the starfish so the starfish also have gills okay so gills uh, so um uh, that is for the echinoderms okay so how to increase the surface area so no funny okay so so this uh increases the surface area uh for the for the starfish by having the the gills okay and then insects, they have the tracheal system, okay. Uh, so they have uh, the, uh, uh, the the structure of the exoskeleton of the insects will have many holes, pores, okay. We call it as the spiracles, okay. So dia tak ada lubang hidung eh. So untuk macam kita, kita breathe in through our nostrils. Dia tak ada tapi dia ada tiny, tiny pores along the uh, the the body of the uh grasshopper or the insects so this allows um, oxygen to enter and carbon dioxide to be removed okay through the tracheal system and then for fish they have gills again okay, so to increase the surface area they have this many this structure we call it as lamella okay so to increase the surface area they have lamella uh, and the lamella is uh, compact with blood capillaries okay macam kita uh, we have uh, lungs and then inside we have alveolus can so many alveolus but for for uh, for fish they have gills that have many lamella kan lamella tu macam gills sorry macam uh, alveolus kita lah kan so the alveolus have uh, the alveolus in the lung it is surrounded by many blood capillaries okay okay so and then okay so we are going to look at the respiratory surface for unicellular organism so the entire uh, the entire cell surface of unicellular organism such as amoeba act as respiratory organ the entire cell surface the haiwan yang unicellular okay ha huh? so so uh, they don't have any circulatory system they don't have any lungs or any organs okay so so just it depends on just a simple diffusion of respiratory gas through the plasma membrane okay across the plasma membrane so oxygen and carbon dioxide simply diffuses in and out of the cell surface. Cell surface here is referring to the plasma membrane, obviously, without the requirement of specific organ. Okay. Okay, plasma membrane. Okay. So the, uh, this can apply. Uh, sorry, this can only happen to unicellular organism due to their small size. Okay. Uh, so plasma membrane. Respiratory gas just uh, diffuses across across the plasma membrane. Okay, so next is a uh, respiratory respiratory surface for worms. Okay, so for worms they depend on the skin. Okay, for gas exchange, so the skin acts as gas exchange organ because worm they ha they are small uh, and flat. Okay, small size and also flat. So it is enough. For the gas exchange to occur across across the skin okay so beneath the skin it is compact with a dense network of blood capillaries so oxygen sorry okay oxygen from the uh, from the air okay from the atmosphere or from the respiratory medium okay respiratory respiratory medium can be uh, can be air can be water okay so uh, oxygen from the air diffused across the 
uh, across the um, the skin of the of the worm and then beneath the skin it has a dense network of blood capillaries okay blood capillaries so oxygen diffuses in carbon dioxide diffuses out okay so so kalau worm worm ni they don't have any uh, lungs obviously okay so the this characteristic provides a high ratio of respiratory surface to body volume allowing for sufficient gas exchange for the whole body so tadi kan kita tengok characteristics of respiratory surface it must be large okay large surface area okay it must be moist it must be thin okay so that diffusion uh, 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 the path for diffusion is short okay so kalau kita tengok kat sini the skin of this the skin of the uh, earthworm is really thin and underneath straight away you have the blood capillary so short distance okay this provide a short distance for gas to diffuse into the blood capillaries to be distributed throughout the um the body of the earthworm okay and another characteristics of the skin it must be moist okay it must be moist so for earthworm they must live in a moist area okay so breath skin breathers also need to live in damp water or moist places kalau letak cacing tengah panas kering semua tak boleh lah dia nak hidup okay so this this uh, will prevent from uh, from um from oxygen to diffuse into the into the into the uh, skin of the earthworm so for earthworm they must live in moist places okay so uh, this facil facilitate the diffusion of gases across across the skin to the dense net of thin thin wall capillaries lying just beneath the skin okay so blood capillaries is really thin one cell thick the skin is also thin so this uh, uh, decreases the distance okay the distance for the gas to to diffuse into the skin and into the blood capillaries okay so itu tadi untuk earthworm they use skin okay so now we are going to look at for organisms or for animals that uses gills okay uh okay gills gills okay so these are uh, aquatic organisms you have fish you have these marine worms you have the crayfish okay and then the starfish so all this aquatic organism for gas exchange they depends on the gills so there are two types of um, gills you have the external gills much any uh, marine worm ni, they have external gills can okay, the gills are exposed to the water right and then internal internal gills much like fish lah can so they um uh, uh dia dalam dia tu, ditutupi oleh yang operculum ni okey ha ni ni alright ah uh, so insang dia kat dalam alright so ex, uh, internal gills are more uh advantages okay advantages it is more um dia tak fragile lah kan kalau external gills it is more fragile Okay, external gills, it is more fragile compared to internal gills. It is protected, okay? Okay, so uh, the gills also have high surface area, okay? So the gills will have many lamella here to increase surface area so that more uh, diffusion of gas exchange occurs, okay? Okay, so respiratory surface, the gills, obviously because they are in water, obviously they are moist, okay, moist thin structures that extend from the body surface okay so the outer surface is exposed to water so water acts as respiratory medium okay respiratory medium to extract oxygen and also to remove carbon dioxide from the body okay and then uh, the inner side uh, they have many a dense network of blood capillaries macam tadi kan kita tengok uh, lamella ni kan so um Okay, outside it is uh, exposed to water. Water has oxygen, carbon dioxide to be removed. And then inside the, it has many network of blood capillaries. Okay. 
apa ni so outer surface is exposed to water inside uh, they have can they have many networks of blood cap, uh, blood vessels blood capillaries okay so uh, sea stars and also sea urchins have dermal gills that project from the body gases are exchanged between water and also silomic uh, fluids sea star ni dengan sea urchin ni dia tak ada darah kan so uh, dia bukan macam ikan closed circulatory system hari tu kita tengok kan open and closed circulatory system okay so uh, so these are for uh, sea star and also sea urchin so the gases from the respiratory medium from the water will enter into the silomic fluid okay uh, to be distributed throughout the body and then um, various types of gills are found in uh, some annelids okay annelids uh, family worms and then aquatic mollusk siput kan cengkerang haiwan yang bercengkerang crustaceans uh, macam apa um, uh, ketam semua tu and then uh, fishes and also amphibians okay so respiratory surfaces gills thus gills have to be very efficient to meet the respiratory demands uh, of of aquatic uh, animals okay so gills must be very efficient to extract oxygen from the water and then to make sure that the the, the oxygen is always supplied to this uh, to to the to the gills of uh, of this aquatic organism okay so the gills must be very very efficient in extracting oxygen from the water okay so gills has a uh, great uh, respiratory surface area compared to the remaining body surface great surf, uh, respiratory surface area dia punya permukaan dia mesti besar kan ciri-ciri respiratory surface permukaan dia mesti besar dengan cara dia ada lamella tu tadi kan so the lamella has many blood capillaries okay so this increases the uh, surface area for gas exchange and then uh, the gills are full of tiny blood vessels that allow close contact with oxygen dissolved in the surrounding water. So, the water will have oxygen and the gills need to extract the oxygen from the water and then uh, the oxygen must diffuse uh, into, the, into the blood vessels in the lamella of the gills. Okay. So, kalau kita tengok structure ni kan, ini lamella. Okay, lamella. Macam kita ada alveolus. The alveolus is surrounded by blood capillaries. For gills, they have many lamella and then the, the lamella has many blood capillaries. Okay. To, uh, so that oxygen can diffuse in and then also to remove carbon dioxide. Okay. Okay, so tadi kita tengok ada dua jenis kan? Gills. So external gills. Okay, external gills, they are more fragile. It is not protected macam dalam, macam gills dalam fish. It is protected by the operculum. Okay. Uh, so, external gills, gills are not enclosed within the body structure. So, larva of many fish and amphibians have external gills. Example given in this picture is uh, is an organism, we call it as axolot. Macam dia dalam species salamander macam tu lah. Okay. Axolot. Okay. So, ini dia punya external, external gills. Okay, so, so for, for animals that depends on gills, they have to constantly move. Okay, they have to constantly move so that the gills can extract oxygen from the, from the water. Okay, so this advantage of having external gills is that uh, the, the, the animals has to constantly move to avoid uh, oxygen de uh, depletion. Okay, kalau dia duduk static je macam tu, the water, uh, the oxygen in the water cannot be extracted by the gills. Okay, yeah. so so uh, this organism that has uh, external gill, they have to constantly move to ensure that um, the oxygen from the water can be extracted. Okay, huh? and then they are also easily damaged Okay, because they are not enclosed within body structure they are not protected okay so kalau ada comel dia ada ada bulu-bulu ni ni bukan dia bulu-bulu dia eh ini adalah dia punya gills okay okay so respiratory surface uh, for fish okay 
So the efficiency of uh, fish gills is due to a simple adaptation called counter current exchange. Kita dah tengok dah ni counter current uh, istilah counter current exchange ni dalam chapter homeostasis. Kan homeostasis to to conserve heat within the body core. Okay. So bila kita tengok pada istilah counter current ni apa dia melibatkan apa? The flow of fluid in opposite direction. Okay, flow of fluid in opposite direction. Hari tu dalam homeostasis, fluid apa yang terlibat? Uh, darah dalam arteri dengan darah dalam vein. They flow in opposite direction and involve exchange of something. That yang dalam homeostasis tu exchange of heat lah, kan? Uh, so, in this case, uh, what are the fluid involved? The blood in the blood capillary in the lamella. Okay, and also the water. Okay, so the water that has the oxygen. So, blood in the lamella will flow in the opposite direction as the water and involve the exchange of gas. Okay, counter current exchange. Fluid that flows in opposite direction and uh, involve exchange of respiratory gas. Water and blood flows in opposite direction, extracting oxygen from the water. So, oxygen is transferred from the uh, from the water that flows on the surface of the lamella to the blood that flows in the opposite direction within the lamella. So, you see here, okay, so this is the the lamella that has blood capillaries. Kalau kita tahu kan, uh, selalu darah yang warna biru, it carries oxygen poor blood. Blood capillaries that is red in color, it carries oxygen rich blood, okay. So, the uh, the blood flow will be from oxygen poor blood masuk dekat uh, area biru dan masuk ke dalam blood capillaries in the lamella. So, it flows daripada kanan ke kiri lah in this case kan. So, water from uh, from left to right. Okay, so fish swimming forward, air mengalir ke depan tapi uh, darah dalam gills tu it uh, flows in the opposite direction kan. Uh, so, this enhance the extraction of oxygen from the water. Okay. So, as uh, it says here, as the low oxygenated blood enters into the lamella, okay, low oxygenated blood yang warna biru ni, kan, darah yang da darah, dalam saluran darah warna biru ni, low oxygenated blood enters into the lamella, it travels, okay, it travels in the direction opposite to the water. Okay, opposite to the water that uh, that that flows across the gills. Okay, so this encounters, uh, it encounters fresher water with higher oxygen concentration. It ni, it it is referring to the flow of blood. Okay, it here is referring to the flow of blood from oxygen poor blood. Okay, until it becomes oxygen rich blood. So darah yang mengalir dalam uh, sal apa da dalam lamella tu. At each point, it encounters water that has higher oxygen concentration. Itu yang maksudnya fresher. Okay. Fresher water. Water with uh, higher oxygen uh, concentration. Okay. Cause, ataupun kita guna simbol. Uh, ni. Partial pressure of oxygen. Okay, this one it, it is uh, PO2 ni, P ni stands for partial pressure, okay, partial pressure of oxygen. So, the, the fresher tu, it is referring to water that has higher concentration of of uh, of oxygen, okay, compared to the oxygen concentration in the blood. Okay, so the blood encounters fresher water with higher oxygen concentration. So, a steep diffusion gradient favors uh, transfer of oxygen from water into the blood. So, if you look at the diagram uh, here, kan yang, yang kat bawah ni, alright. So, uh, the blood will flow from oxygen poor blood dalam saudara warna biru tu from the uh, from the uh, blood vessels that carry oxygen poor, poor blood. So, it, it, at each point, it will encounters water with higher oxygen concentration. Okay, kalau kalau ada uh, air yang lalu baru masuk, obviously oxygen concentration is higher. 
in this case is 150. So it encounters blood that has lower partial pressure of oxygen which is 140. So oxygen akan diffuse masuk dalam blood capillaries. 120 in, in water, it encounters blood that has partial pressure 110. So oxygen diffuse in. So so dia punya um, diffusion, oh tengok dia punya uh, apa? Uh, concentration of oxygen tu dia tak drop secara mendadak. Okay, so kalau dia drop secara mendadak nanti dia akan cepat reach equilibrium. You don't want equilibrium to be reached. You want to make sure at each point uh, the oxygen concentration in in water is always higher compared to, to, to the blood. So there's always um, the difference in oxygen concentration. So oxygen will always diffuse from water into the blood in the lamella, uh, in the gills. Okay. So a steep diffusion gradient favors the transfer of oxygen from water into the into the blood. Okay. So ini adalah counter current exchange. Water and blood flows in the opposite direction. Uh, the blood encounters water with higher oxygen concentration. So oxygen from the water enters into into the blood. Uh, itu je. Okay. If you have a, a question, you can ask. Eh? Uh, so if not, I assume that you understand. Okay, so... Um, so those, the gills are used by aquatic organism, organism that lives in water, fish, starfish, okay, uh, um, crustacean and all that. So for organism that lives on land, terrestrial organism, okay, terrestrial organism are uh, organism that lives on land, animals that live on land. So they will not or they cannot depend on gills. So the gills are replaced either by using lungs or tracheal system, okay, or the skin. Okay, so in terrestrial habitat, gills are replaced. Tak boleh digunakan pada haiwan yang duduk uh, on land. Sebab apa? Sebab the, the respiratory medium now is the air. Okay, respiratory medium is the air. The air is the source for extracting oxygen and to remove carbon dioxide. So the air is less buoyant than water. The air cannot support the gills. Okay, so air is uh, is less buoyant. So water can allow the gills to float, but the air cannot. So the air is less buoyant. Okay, than the than the water. So gills need structural support of water. So water need akan bagi buoyancy lah pada gills to support the structure of gills. As the gills is very fragile. Okay, so the air cannot. So uh, because air is less buoyant than water, so gills will collapse outside the water. Okay, ha? so uh, kalau kalau siang ikan kan insang dalam ikan tu, I think dia dah rapat-rapat semua, so it will collapse. Okay, the gills will collapse. And then uh, water diffuses into air through evaporation. So the, so um, gills provide an enormous Surface area for water loss through evaporation. So, tadi kita tengok gills ada banyak lamela kan. So, this increases the surface area because the surface area is is large and is it is exposed to the air. So, so this uh, will cause water to diffuse from the respiratory surface from the from the gills. Okay. So, three main types of respiratory organ used by the terrestrial uh, animals are trachea. This uh, trachea is used by by uh, insects. Okay, skin, for example, um, uh, amphibians, and then lungs, mammals lah. Okay, mammals, birds. Okay, so that depends on the lungs. Okay, so kita kita tengok dulu untuk uh, insects. Okay, so insects have uh, an extensive system of external chitin uh, reinforced tube named as trachea. Okay which uh, which branches throughout the body yeah, so ini untuk insect eh, tracheal system trachea so the trachea is a tube that is made up of chitin uh, so the structure is um, this structure will will make sure that the tube it will remain open lah tak collapse kalau dia made up of muscle it will collapse okay so the trachea is made up of chitin so to make sure that the tube remain open okay 
Okay, so the trachea which branches throughout the body. So insects and some other arthropods have network of tracheal tubes, trachea, that uh, delivers air uh, directly to two cells. Okay, so the the so udara can oxygen can diff, uh, can diffuse masuk through the spherical tiny tiny pores along the body uh, of the insects. Okay, so so they have many spiracles so that oxygen can uh, can enter and carbon dioxide to be removed okay and then from the tracheal tube and then they can branch at the tracheal and then the the tracheal will extend into each individual cell okay each individual cell so uh, so air enter through spherical along the body surface muscle may help pump air in and out of the spherical so the insect will also need to move uh, so uh, so this to help to pump air in and out of the spherical. So this system eliminates the needs of having a closed circulatory system for transporting oxygen as in higher animals. So yeah, ini uh, for insects they don't have closed circulatory system to uh, they don't have any blood to um to transport a uh, respiratory gas. Okay, kita tengok hari tu dia dia oh, for insects they have open can open circulatory system so it is not efficient to distribute uh, oxygen to each individual cell so this one for insects that depends on the trachea okay so tube to i can i can branch to uh, into smaller smaller tubes into individual individual cell okay um Okay, so the system relies on a network of small tubes that channel oxygen directly to different parts of the body. So air enters uh, the tracheal tube through the spherical, tiny, tiny pores along the body of the insects. So the tracheal tube branch into smaller and smaller tubes called the, as the tracheals. Okay, so these tips of, uh, of the tracheals are enclosed, sorry, are closed and contain fluids. Remember, eh, ciri, ciri respiratory surface, it must be moist. Yeah, so, so these tiny, tiny tubes, they, they have fluids. Okay, fluids to allow oxygen or respiratory gas to dissolve and then diffuse. Uh, so, they must be, they must contain uh, fluid. Lah. Okay, contain fluid where gas are exchanged between the fluid and the body cells. So, oxygen to the top is simply diffuse. The respiratory gas must be dissolved and then diffused. Okay, so it must be moist. It must have, uh, the tube must have fluid. So piping air directly from the external environment can okay, the spherical to external masuk uh, into uh, into the tubes. Okay, from trachea, tracheals into each individual body uh, body cells. Okay, so environment to uh, to the cells works very well for the insects because their small body. Give uh, give them a high surface area to to uh, uh, to volume ratio. Okay, so insects also prevent excessive water loss by closing spherical, uh, which is the breathing part. So in order to uh, to conserve water also, so they will co uh, will close the spiracles. Okay, so itu untuk insects lah kan. So now uh, that depends on the trachea trachea. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to move on to the next uh, structure of respiratory surface, which is the lungs. So the lungs you are very familiar. Okay, uh, yang ni pun kita tengok dah hari tu secara tak langsung dalam chapter circulatory system. So main terrestrial vertebrates have lungs which are internal. Okay, internal sac lined with moist epithelium. Okay. Moist epithelium. So epithelium is the lining of the alveolus. It is one cell thick. Okay. Uh, so in contrast to the trachea system of insect, lungs are restricted to to one location in the body. They dalam kita punya thoracic cavity lah, kan? So tetapi kalau insects, it is extended throughout the body, right? Uh, so the tubes will branch into smaller and smaller and smaller tubes into each individual uh, cells. That is for insects. Tapi kalau uh, kalau mammals, kalau vertebrates, that depends on the lung. The lung is located only in one 
area. Okay, for for human, we have the thoracic cavity to 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 locate the uh, uh, that is the place uh, for the lung lah. So in uh, in contrast to the trachea, okay, kita baca. So therefore, uh, there is a need of a circulatory system. Okay, gas exchange uh, occurs in the lung, but to distribute the oxygen to remove carbon dioxide from all different parts of the body. So it uh, your body has to also depend on the circulatory system to transport this respiratory gas throughout the body. Okay. Okay. So next is uh, the respiratory surface for frogs. Okay. So uh, by it says here by the cutaneous respiration, cutaneous respiration, where the frog depends on. On the skin for gas action. That is cutaneous. Tapi kalau kita belajar itu palmo cutaneous, skin and also the lungs. Okay, skin and also lungs. Um, so amphibia breathe using positive pressure breathing. Okay, positive pressure breathing. So inflating the lungs with forced air flow. Kita kalau human, kita guna negative pressure breathing. Uh, nanti kita tengok apa, apa tu negative kan. So Kalau in this case, positive pressure breathing, um, the the pressure inside the lung okay, is lower compared to the source of the air that will provide oxygen to enter into the lung. So, tap, kalau untuk frog ni, dia akan kumpul dulu udara dalam dia punya buccal cavity. Okay, buccal cavity. So, bila dia kumpul udara dalam buccal cavity dia, there, there will be a high pressure inside the buccal cavity and then um, um, the frog will elevate um, elevate the, the, the floor of the oral cavity can uh, so they can push push the air into the into the lung that is positive pressure breathing dalam lung pressure of uh, the air pressure is low compared to the buccal cavity so udara yang banyak dalam buccal cavity tu akan dipush masuk ke dalam lung that is positive pressure Okay, so they perform this by filling the buccal cavity with air, uh, closing their mouth and then nostrils uh, and then elevates the floor of the oral cavity and this pushes the air down into the trachea. Cuba lah buat awak kembung kat punya mulut, lepas tu tutup awak punya hidung and then push the air into the, into the, into the lung. Kita, kita sebagai, kita human, we don't do that, uh, kan? Kita just no, breathe normally. So, Kita, kita guna, for human, we use negative pressure breathing. Okay, negative pressure breathing. Nanti kita tengoklah negative pressure breathing tu macam mana. Okay, tapi kalau frog, they use positive pressure breathing. Okay. Okay, so next is the respiratory surface uh, in birds. Okay, so uh, flying is a high energy activity. Birds generally have a high metabolic rate, okay, and require a great deal of oxygen. Um, activity fly tu merupakan activity yang memerlukan tenaga yang banyak. Kita belajar dulu kan, cellular respiration, perlu uh, perlu oxygen, kan, perlu fuel. So, for these birds, kalau dia guna macam human, breathe in, breathe out, to, uh, so that oxygen can be supplied uh, into the lungs, tak. It is not enough to supply enough oxygen for uh, for for cellular respiration to be uh, to to occur to to provide to uh, to provide uh, energy for the bird to to fly. It is not enough. Okay, so kalau bird ni in uh, the lung has to be continuously uh, supplied with oxygen. They breathe in ke, breathe out ke, the inhale ke, exhale ke. Masa they exhale tu. Ada juga moment yang yang dia akan inhale juga. So so it, itu birds dia dia berbeza dengan human. Bila kita exhale human, kan? Kita bila kita exhale tak ada udara yang masuk pada masa tu. Tapi kalau bird dia special, kita kita, kita tengok macam mana. Okay? So birds have evolved a two cycle breathing process. Ah ini cara dia two cycle breathing process. Okay, involving both lungs that involve unidirectional a flow okay a flow yeah so two two cycle breathing process and the and the flow and the flow of air is is in uh, in one direction sahaja okay nanti kita tengok 
So the uh, the bird lungs channel air through tiny vessels called as the parabronchi. Okay, so air passes one way through the tubes uh, while blood flows in the opposite direction. This is called as uh, uh, cross current. Okay, cross current flow. So bird lungs have two groups of air sac, anterior and also posterior air sac. So kita tengok kat sini. Kalau birds ni, dia sebenarnya dia ada two, two inhalation and two exhalation. Yeah. So, one one unidirectional airflow ni, maksudnya kalau kita tengok dalam gambar raja ni, so dia ke udara akan masuk, dia masuk and then through down the trachea. Tapi trachea tu dia tak, dia tak masuk kat lung dulu. Macam kita, kita breathe in into the, uh, into the trachea and then into your lungs kan. Tapi kalau birds, trachea and then dia akan kumpulkan da, uh, uh, udara tu dulu dalam air sac. Air sac dia ada dua. Anterior air sac, bahagian depan. And then posterior air sac, bahagian dalam. And in between, uh, bahagian belakang lah. Okay. And then in between the anterior and posterior air sac, you have the lungs. Okay. So fresh air will enter through the nostrils and then enter into the trachea and then dia akan collect dulu dalam posterior air sac. Okay. So that is inhalation. Okay, air sac are filled. Okay, so on inhalation, both sets of air sac expand. Uh, inhaled air flows down the trachea, bypasses the lung and fills up the posteri posterior air sac. So, dia akan penuhkan dulu uh, yang uh, apa, kantung udara yang kat belakang. Okay, posterior air sac will be filled first. Okay, at the same time, the anterior air sac uh, will fill with stale, stale air from the from the lungs. Udara yang dah digunakan dalam lung ni, udara yang dah penuh dengan carbon dioxide, dia akan ditolak masuk ke dalam anterior air sac. Okay, so during inhalation, both air sac will um, will will expand. Okay, They, both air sac will expand. Cuma kalau posterior, it is filled with fresh air. Tapi kalau anterior, it is filled with Stale, uh, stale air from the, from the lungs. So that is inhalation. Tapi kalau exhalation, both air sac deflate. Kan? Dia akan uh, apa, mengecut. And then this causes the stale air to be removed, keluar, okay, through the nostril. And then fresh air to be pushed into the, into the lung. Okay? So exhalation... Both sets of air sac uh, deflate, forcing fresh air from the posterior into the lungs, stale air from the anterior out through the tri uh, trachea. So, that is one direction, unidirectional. Okay, daripada, saya contoh balik. From the nostril into the trachea, into the posterior uh, air sac. Kalau stale air into the anterior air sac, that is inhalation, exhalation. Air sac deflate, okay. Uh, fresh air into the into the lung, stale air out. Uh, that is unidirectional. Satu arah je. Okay, satu arah je. Okay, that is two cycle breathing. Okay, two cycle breathing processes. Okay, so this makes sure that the lungs is always uh, continuously supplied with fresh air. Walaupun dia tengah exhale, yang ni kan, dalam keadaan exhale, udara yang segar still akan masuk dalam dalam lung to provide oxygen. Okay. So last slide lah kita habiskan yang ni. So due to the unidirectional uh, air flow and cross current blood flow made the avian respiratory system is the most efficient terrestrial vertebrates. So avian, burung, they have to have a, a, an efficient mechanism of extracting uh, oxygen while they are flying. Okay. So, so they depend on unidirectional air flow and also Uh, two cycle breathing okay two cycle breathing dia ada dua dua inhalation and dua exhalation okay so this this will make sure that the lung is continuously supplied with fresh air okay um dalam lungs of uh, of the birds dia ada salur saluran tube Can we call it as the parabronchi? So parabronchi, apa uh, cross current tu maksudnya udara yang masuk ni 
akan flow kalau tadi kalau fish in opposite direction, direction kan kalau uh, birds darah dengan udara tu dia akan flow cross current oh nampak kan tu cross current okey okey so that's it uh, for our lecture today kalau awak ada apa-apa nak tanya boleh tanya